So hey guys, welcome to my Saturday ride this week. One of my Saturday rides. We're gonna do another ride this evening. So originally I planned to do a longer ride on snow-covered country roads to get to a conservation area with a beautiful lake, but it was stupid cold this morning. It was like minus 25 still at like eight in the morning. And I dealt with a bunch of minus 20 to minus 25 mornings on my ride to work this week. So I'm gonna wait a while to see if it warms up because the predicted high today, I think was supposed to be minus 10, but it was like 2.30 in the afternoon. It's just after 2.30. And it's still, according to my Garmin, it's minus 14.4. So I guess that's fairly close to minus 10, but not as warm as they said it was gonna get. So I we'll figure, well, I wanna do a vlog today. So we're gonna go out and ride. We're gonna go up the Current River. We're gonna go to the top of Current River where the beautiful rapids begin. There's some nice trails to get us there. So I got uh, Dillinger 4 tires on. Normally I would have switched out to Dillinger 5s for trail riding, but because originally the plan was actually to ride mostly on snow-covered roads, I was gonna keep these narrower tires on for theoretically less rolling resistance. And also uh, there's probably exposed pavement to deal with so figured I'd put these tires on that exposed pavement since they're new as opposed to my Dillinger 5s which have older studs so I want to damage the studs on that tire less the conditions aren't very fast it's feeling slow so it might take an hour to get to the top of the river I'm starting this ride fairly late. I think it started at like 2.30ish. And sunset is just after five. So there'll only be, by the time we get home, probably less than 30 minutes of daylight. Still got uh, a few more days till we hit winter solstice and days slowly start getting longer. But as it is now, when for my commuting, to and from work when I get to work it's dark and when I get home it's dark so when I start out my ride home from work I don't have my lights on but 20 30 minutes into my ride home from work I turn my lights on I don't know if you guys can you guys hear that click so I'm getting a click for my drivetrain so I don't know if it's uh might be my pedal because I didn't have any grease at home so I used chain lube to lubricate the threads but it might be the bottom bracket. So I bought a new computer, GPS computer. Been using a Polar M450 since I think March of this year. Because my Garmin uh, 800, my previous Garmin, just one day died, stopped working after a little more than two years. So before that happened, because I was trying to ride the most I ever have in a year, I needed, couldn't go without a GPS device. So I bought that Polar as a backup device. And lo and behold, one day my Garmin did completely stop working. So everything I tried wouldn't fix it. So, been using that puller now like I said since March this year and yeah, I mean it does everything the basics that a GPS bike computer is supposed to do strap your speed distance average speed all that stuff but it's missing a lot of features that I got used to having on that Garmin 800 so first off it's only rated to work down to the polar is only rated down to minus 10 Celsius. So after minus 10, you notice 
the screen gets sluggish the digits don't change very quickly and then once you hit minus 20 and colder which i've already seen a fair bit of this winter parts of the screen become unreadable and the digits get all pixelated and change really really slowly so i don't know if using it at those temperatures is damaging it so that's probably the main reason i think the garmin 520 and up are rated down to minus 20 celsius and they work my garmin 800 worked reasonably well down to minus 30 celsius which i used it in a few times on my right to work i had some mornings that cold but i guess you could say theoretically that those temperatures might damage the unit it might have ended the life of my garmin 800 early but everybody lately that i've been talking about computers strangely i've had conversations about computers quite a few times the past few months with people they all seem to say well two years for an electronic device is probably what you should expect in terms of lifespan and like it got extreme well i should say extreme but lots of use that garmin 800 in 2016 i put 669 hours on it so yeah got a fair bit of use but i think i paid 400 dollars for that which was a decent price in canada for the 800 at the time so now with this one this is kind of the, the cheapest nice garmin that you can buy so i'm not gonna spend money on the expensive ones anymore So, so far so good. What else about it? Like, yeah, so I wanted, a Polar has a backlight, but you can't leave it permanently on. On this Garmin, you can permanently leave it on. Since the majority of my riding in the winter time is pretty much done in the dark, riding in daylight hours like this is actually the exception. So I want a backlight. And I've used it on the 800 for quite a few hours. Like three hour rides with the backlight on around the minus 20 Celsius area. And it doesn't really use up that much battery life. So that's the backlight. And then uh, the number of fields on the screen. So how many pieces of information on the Polar, the M450. You can only get four fields per screen. This one you can get up to 10. So I have information overload staring me in the face. It's looking beautiful in here. Still snow on the trees. We don't have tons of snow, but decent amount. Certainly makes it feel like winter. So I, I've been here a few times. I don't think I've ever really shown you this spot. You've seen pictures and bits of video of it. Check out this ice formation here. So there's a cliff and the water all runs down and it freezes down here. Totally looks pretty sweet. Nice place to take a picture of your bike. I've taken tons of pictures here. Uh, the area I live in is actually world renowned for its ice climbing. We have ice falls, a lot of ice falls in the area. 
people travel from all over the world to come ice climb here. Most of them are probably about 100k away from the city, but it's world renowned, the area. And believe it or not, a lot of foot traffic come through here, but it's still not smooth. It's actually still quite bumpy from the human footprints. See other fat bike tracks here. People have been in here today. Braver than me. Came out when it was colder. Although if you're deciding between a polar and a Garmin, there are some good things about the M450, polar M450 and M460. And the main benefit is the unit is always on. It's like a watch. So when you press the power, the start button, it turns on like a watch. So it's always ready. And then you press it one more time and then it acquires satellites. So it's actually faster to acquire satellites than this Garmin is. Let me a little bit of downhilling here. So they do horse sleigh rides here in the winter time. We're in a city park here. So there's a truck that's been through here. I don't know if that's park staff or someone drove in here in the middle of the night. I think there's fencing up to stop that. Oh, here's some ice. There's some beautiful pictures we could take here, but procrastinated and started this ride late, so we have to keep riding. We'll take some pictures at our destination. Should take like an hour to get there, hour from my house. So like, we've been riding for 35 minutes and this is the beautiful stuff I can get to and like 30 minutes from my house. Pretty sweet. Some of the good things about living in a small isolated city is instant access to natural beauty. I'm gonna let a little more air out of my tires. Smooth out the ride a little. So these are the cheapest studded 45 North tires. So they're fat bike tires. So they're the wire bead. They're only 33 TPI. So the sidewalls are really stiff and I haven't done any real low pressure riding with these things because I have my Dillinger 5s for that normally. So let's see what these feel like. let more air out of them. Should be better. Out the back. Like with because the sidewall is so stiff you have to let out even more to get it to be compliant. 
right now let's see what that feels like all right yes notice would be better but i can feel the rear tire sluggishness of the rear tire now because of the lower pressure but it's a much smoother ride you might even be able to notice it on the camera Absolutely gorgeous through here. I know some cyclists, but I'm like, yeah, you should try fat biking. And they're like, no, oh, I'm not interested in riding my bike in the winter time. I have no clue what they're missing out on. Some of the most amazing, beautiful things I've ever seen happened on winter fat bike rides. Usually the guys that say that are pure roadies and they have no mountain biking experience or minimal mountain biking experience so I'm sure part of it is fear but winter fat biking is actually easier in a sense the riding actually becomes less technical because when you get decent amount of snow it covers everything it covers all the roots covers over all the rocks But it's generally harder physically because of the rolling resistance. And lots of times hill climbing conditions aren't perfectly hard packed. There's less grip, so it can be a real chore to climb. And because it's slower, your hills basically become bigger because you actually take longer to climb physically, time-wise. The physical time it takes to climb is longer, so the hill is longer. You spend more time working. And this uh, section here that we're riding through like in the summer is basically unrideable because it's so soft and mossy and swampy so it only becomes rideable in the winter and then once we get tons of snow it's much better so there is a Strava segment for this whole trail and fastest time was set in the winter so there are lots of uh, Strava segments on these trails that the fastest time was set in the winter because the snow covers everything and it becomes so much less technical all you have to do is pedal you don't have to avoid shit or choose lines yeah, that's really nice through here so we did the last video I made was that music video and we have gotten a little bit more snow since that so Kind of refreshed the snow coverage on the trees so we're at 45 minutes so yeah probably 50 minutes or so to get to where we're going so cascades so we left the city park called cascades and now we're in uh, what's called a conservation area I'm oh, sorry, we left a city park called Centennial Park and now we're in a conservation area called Cascades. So these lower trails here become pretty much pure single track. So these are the best trails we have for winter fat bagging. 
because they get enough foot traffic that they get hard packed. So our main trail system is probably 300 meters to our left. That's our specific mountain bike trail system, but it's too far for people to walk. Most people don't walk in there. In fact, a lot of people don't even know those trails exist. And there's just not enough fat bikers to make it as beautiful as this. It's actually warmer in here. I thought it was gonna get colder as we moved away from Lake Superior and we're kind of gaining elevation at the same time. I actually expected the temperature to cool off quite a bit in here, but it hasn't. It's minus 14.9, a little bit colder, 14.9 Celsius, just a bit colder than it was in town. It's really beautiful through here. A little archway for us here. So there's probably fat bikers in here right now. Other fat bikers because I see tire tracks that nobody has put a footprint over. I forgot I was blocking. So this Cascades doesn't have any big hills in it, but the tough hills that it have are, are short and steep. My legs don't feel great today. It should feel okay. I didn't really ride hard yesterday. I did two hours. I ride to and from work combined ended up taking two hours. And so we got another steep hill here. Deal with. So, like for the past month I haven't been doing any uh, hard riding like interval type stuff still been riding a decent amount but haven't been doing any hard riding so that power in LA is, is noticeably not there so just this week I've eased into doing harder riding again Tuesday I did a a workout on the way home and Thursday I did a workout on the way home and I'll do a workout again tomorrow start building back up because even if you don't race Strava is great for setting fitness goals and trying to achieve goals where they're usually I mean to prove you 
to prove that you've improved it's to be faster set faster times usually in the summer I get fit enough to take some KOMs in the city it's getting harder as I get older and there's always a new breed of young guys okay so I think over here I might have to start walking the bike soon yeah so young guys are always fast at the peak of their body's ability to go fast and mine's on a decline constant decline battery died just as I was trying to finish there so that that's the first battery we used today it's one of my original GoPro batteries so now I have a newer generic battery it should last longer so that GoPro battery lasted less than an hour This is unrideable. Yeah. I want to get to the top of the falls. I have to drive our bike up this mini mountain. We want to get all the way, see that flat spot up there? We want to go up there. There is actually a trail through the woods in the left, but that goes up there, but it probably has seen less traffic than the foot traffic we're seeing here. tougher than I thought it was going to be. I have to get up top there, pushing a bike, which isn't going to be easy. I don't know how safe it is to walk over there. So let's give it a try. It's fairly safe. Okay, maybe not. Try and get up here. Now we're gonna go back and try another spot right here. On the downside of a frame bag is it makes it difficult to uh, carry your bike because you can't stick your hands under the top tube. Still not there yet. Looks like most people gave up and stopped here. We're gonna keep going. Almost there. Almost there. Let's try this way.
The other thing is, uh, when we got our first big dump of snow, it had rained first, and then that froze. We got some freezing rain. So uh, the coating on these rocks is basically ice underneath the snow. Actually, first I gotta take a leak. All right, unfortunately we had to add some yellow to this beautiful white. Take a drink, Gatorade. So one of the reasons I came up here is because uh, so we're at the top more, more or less of the most serious rapids and cascades and the river calms more or less around that corner up there and once full on winter conditions, winter colds, we're probably talking January, uh, snowmobiles ride on this top part. So the idea is to We'll probably have to do it on a road because there's a road that goes up and there's a bridge that crosses this river and at that point there's access down to the river and we'll be able to ride on the snowmobile trail so we'll be able to come down as far as the snowmobiles go which will be cool and you can also keep riding uh, upstream i think that'll make a nice nice vlog so take some pictures or what yeah, so now we don't have much more than an hour of daylight. down over here where we got a little more falls action so you can see it kind of stair steps its way up here actually at the bottom there's a swimming hole where people come here to swim fortunately because it's all rock what do you think stupid people do they break bottles here Okay, just got three pictures there. Now we have to start heading back. And unfortunately we have to push our bike some ways still. Okay, so we gotta get over there. This looks rideable here. And then I'll go over the edge. We're gonna be able to ride up these stairs, but we'll give it a try. Nope. Still not enough 
have snow on them. Tire just sinks in between them. Now the five inch tire might do better because it would sink in less since the diameter is larger. More unrideable stairs. Normally the trail beside it is actually worn in by fat bikers, but that hasn't happened yet. You have to take a real strong run up it to make it make it up. I'm surprised we I didn't we didn't see anybody down on those rocks, but since we're less than an hour from sunset that must be why. And it's a weekend so a lot of people had the day off anyway so they were here earlier. So it should make better time on the way home because it should be more downhill than uphill. It's beautiful. Over here. Yeah, so this snow that's on the trees, it's going to stay until it really till it melts, till it gets fairly warm because the beginnings of what's on those all these branches is ice. That's why they're all way down like that. Because there's ice on there as well. Ugh, stick in the eye. Still need more snow to cover some of these roots in here. Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Probably come do this ride again tomorrow. It's beautiful. Conditions are pretty good. It's safe. Don't have to deal with automobile traffic. Maybe not exactly what we did today, but we're definitely going to come in here tomorrow. And the weather's supposed to warm up tomorrow. warmer than minus 10 Celsius. So 